previously on JSTV. This is my recording studio. This here is what I call Settlelands Barcade. Seeing a band for the first time, playing shows, driving 30 hour trips, crash on like hardwood floors. The band come to an end. Do I want to take an absolute risk and try my absolute love, which was country music? Now all this just turned into a bit of a blur, but through meeting Craig, I recorded a song called Right About Now. Hi, do you guys remember these things? Chatterboxes, woo! But anyway, welcome back to JSTV. It is so good to have you guys back watching again for another episode. So we ended the last episode by saying, I can't wait for you to meet the boss. I can't wait for you to meet the band. Today, we are gonna do that. So my team is like one of the most important things to me in the world. Every single band member, even the boss, they play such a big role in doing what I do. And I feel like I would be nothing without these people. And because during this season, you guys are gonna see them so much, I thought, you know what? We'll give them an actual intro and I'll let you guys get to know them. Actually, I have a brilliant idea. We are going to use the chatterbox to choose which member. I need that. Pen. Pick a colour. I can't hear you, so I'm going to, I'm going to say pink. P-I-N-K. Pick a number. I can't hear you, so I'm going to say two. One, two. I'll just, I'll just do it from here. Dana. So we're going to talk about the boss. The boss. The boss. So what can I say about Dana? Um, I kind of already said a lot about Dana in the first episode. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you go back and uh, watch that one. We work really well together, you know, I, I couldn't do it without Dana. We've been through a lot together, you know, still still tackling this country music thing like head on. But yeah, no, here, here we go. Let's, uh, let's, let's introduce Dana and you guys can meet her for the first time through a screen. Here we go. Hey, I'm Dana, also known as the boss, 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 which I just can't do. <laughs> I'm the manager behind Josh Setterfield. As some may not know, I also am the publicist, the booking agent, the merch girl. I think as Josh mentioned, everything you've seen of Josh Setterfield is pretty much Josh and I behind the scenes. For those that know me, know that I'm not one to sit in front of a camera, but I guess thanks to JSTV, that has gone out the window very, very quickly. <laughs> Can blame her. <laughs> you may ask why I do what I do for a living. At the end of the day, I just love music and I love what it gives to people. So I've known Josh for a very long time. We actually met backstage at a Simple Plan concert, believe it or not. I eventually became the manager for Josh's former band. Josh and I had always worked well together, um, even back in the band dynamic. We were, we were really good at sort of putting things together, making things happen. Um, and creating opportunities together. So when he asked me to manage him coming into country, um, yeah, I was, I've always loved country music. So for me, it was, it was like I'd found, I'd found a home. It did take on a life of its own much quicker than I probably imagined, um, but I've just loved watching the journey and, and where it's going. Josh is such an incredibly hard worker. Some probably don't see everything that he does behind the scenes, but yeah, he, he works so so hard as an artist. He gives 200% of himself to everything and he pays so much attention to detail and his passion towards music and his career. Country definitely wasn't ready for Josh Setterfield but as an artist he has everything it takes to achieve that dream and make that make his dream a reality. I've watched Josh grow as an artist over the years, like I've, I've known him a long time now and every year with everything that he does, he just continues to get better and better and better at his craft. As a manager, I just can't wait to see where that's going to go and where it's going to take him and I'm, I'm so honoured to be the manager for him and to be able to work with Josh and I hope that continues and I can't wait to see where, where this takes us. Hey boss! You killed it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that was the boss. All right, it is time to pick another member. Whoop, whoop. I'm gonna say, he said green. G-R-E-E-N. Four, one, two, three, four. Simon. You... So Simon's a pretty valuable person to have in my corner. And without him, you know, I, I would have had a million mental breakdowns by now or anxiety attacks on stage or, you know, like he can't, he keeps the whole show running. He's uh, one of the best people I've ever met, to be honest. We've known each other for a really long time, as I'm sure he'll tell you in his little segment, but I would have crashed and burned a lot of times without Simon in my corner. 
He's just that lovable kind of guy, you know. He cracks jokes, funny as hell. He makes me cry with laughter. But at the same time, like, he can be a real serious dude and he's, he's down to business when you need him to be. So Simon, he, he keeps our entire show running, you know. Like, he's... He's the one I kind of turn around to. If something goes wrong, I turn around and say, I blame it on Simon. <laughs> not really, not really. No, but honestly, he's he's one of the most reliable dudes I've ever met. And to do this journey without him so far would have been a completely different thing if he wasn't involved. So here we go. Let's meet Simon. Let's oh, no. <laughs> not go cutting Simon. Set on, I believe it's pronounced. My name is Simon. Uh, I play drums with um, Josh Tannerfield, and I also offer like a little bit of comedic relief. Yeah, that's 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 kind of my job. I've been playing with Josh since I don't know. I'll have to ask Dana. Um, a couple of years now. I met Josh first back in like 2008, and um, we were both playing in punk bands. I kind of left that whole scene and started like focusing on the business side of music, I guess. And um, Dana was working for like the same company I was working for. I respected the the hustle she she had, which she still has like that same, you know, real drive and hustle. Did like a Shadow Knoll show on the Sunshine Coast. Dana came to that show. Josh came to that show as well. And that was the first time I'd seen Josh in, you know, like five or six years, something like that. Like a couple of months later, Josh just put up a thing on Facebook and was like, I'm trying to put together a band. I put my hand up. Not even. I didn't even put my hand up because it was like a social media, so I don't think it works if you put your hand up. I don't think they can like see through the screen. I probably commented on it and said, you know, I know how to kinda know how to play some drums. I auditioned. I sent him through a video of me playing my kind of Saturday night. So after about a week, I hadn't heard anything from him after I sent it. And I was like, hey, just checking you got the file, you know. And he was like, yeah, man, sounds good, no sweat. But he didn't even open the file. Like, he didn't even bother. So I invested at least three minutes, 30 of my time into recording that. Yeah, I've kind of been playing with him ever since. I think that's kind of that's kind of gone on to a little bit of a definition of our dynamic, the way Josh and I work, where it's just, I really, really trust him. And I think Josh trusts me as well. Simon's team, fucking drink o'clock. We're in a band. This guy's coming in to play guitar and he showed up in like stubbies, probably like a 4X singlet and thongs. And I was like, but the guy just shredded. Mick is like, Mick is very, very at home in this band. And I think like Mick's playing has become such an important part of the, the Josh Setterfield live show, I guess. He drinks like a motherfucker too. So, uh, India, I met India, I can't even remember. She's such a forgettable person. Uh, <laughs> I, I met India at a rehearsal. Drew had been doing like a, a, like a ton of shows with us by that point. It was kind of tough to have someone come in to fill those shoes, but India just like, she just got it immediately. For me as a drummer, it's so important to lock in with the bass player. Her and I were just immediately really, really tight together. I, I really like India. I, I think she's great. There's a couple of things that I like, I wish she wouldn't do. I'm trying to pinch my food and stuff. You just don't mess with a man's food. I think the beautiful part about this band is like, we all really care about the music. If we don't give, you know, 700%, we're gonna know it in ourselves. Probably one of the things I really like about Josh is that inside the rehearsal room is exactly the same as it is on stage. Like Josh will stand, you know, in the spot, stand at a blank wall with us behind him, but he puts in the exact same energy there as we do at a at, at a big show. I really respect that because it's 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 showing respect for fans, knowing that like, you know, we wanna have our shit together so that the fans understand that this means a lot to us we get out just as much as they do. Go back in, you f***ing 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 We don't usually bleep swear words in these things, but that one needed it. All right, let's go. Next member, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna pick red. Three, uno, dos, tres. All right, who have we got? India. India is the newest member of this band. Um, she hasn't been in it for very long. We had a bass player for a couple of years named Drew and uh, over what happened in the last couple of years with everything shutting down and such, it was really hard to fly him up because he lived in Melbourne. So we brought in a bass player um, to fill in and it was it was only meant to be for one show. I told India and she was really keen to do it. So we signed her up, she learned the songs like that, absolute legend, powerhouse bass player. She came up onto the sunny coast and played a show with us. A couple things happened here and there and we started picking up more and more shows as they started to come back. And so India just kept getting called up because it was all last minute stuff. And I don't know what I don't know what happened, but she's she's still here. She hasn't she hasn't left. <laughs> we absolutely love her to death, you know, she's she's absolute legend. She slots into the band so well. But seriously, one of the best bass players I've met. But hey, here we go. Let's get you guys to meet India. Oh, Here's India. India. Check out her outfit right now. It's more rock star than any of us. Hey, my name is India Rain and I play bass and guitar 
and maybe a bit of drums, anything I can get my hands on, wrap my bass for Josh Satterfield. I'm influenced by a range of genres, mostly predominantly rock and roll, dirty guitar slash Guns N' Roses, Rolling Stones, Beatles, all of that classic rock. And I kind of have always enjoyed country, old country, and Josh actually introduced me to more modern country. Now I've, you know, deep down that rabbit hole of country. I first met Josh, well, I met him, he didn't meet me. In like 2015, I was volunteering at a music venue, an all ages music venue. This band was playing and I just remember this cool guy with like a white guitar. He still hadn't met me. Cut to about 2019, he was filling in for my band on guitar and we just hit it off from there. And I got asked to fill in for one of Josh's shows. It was exciting and I kind of never really left and I don't know how they feel about that, but I'm here. I love working with Dana and Josh. I think Dana is the coolest person ever. Not to get really tacky, but she is an inspiration. She's a badass woman who's in the music industry. It's very male dominated at times. Yeah, she's an inspiration and working with Josh is always, always lots of fun. And working with them together is very entertaining. You see Boss come out. Bosch? No, Bosch. Bosch? <laughs> The dynamics of this band is awesome. We are like one big family, whether that's dysfunctional or functional. Mick shreds and I can't wait for him to have a huge guitar solo, slash style, like coming out from the water or something, like rising, like shredding. Simon is a phenomenal drummer and he's so good at keeping us in line and tour management and everything. He's like He's like dad. Josh is like the cool big brother I never had. He's always a laugh. You can go to him for important things. And he's such a dedicated musician. And then Dana is just the coolest boss ever. I love all of them. I pick this thing up every time I throw it. All right, one. There's only one member left. I don't even need this. Mick. So the way that Mick came into the group was uh, probably a little different to the others. I had a guitarist that was playing a show with us and uh, he couldn't make the show kind of last minute and I, I really need someone to kind of fit the spot. So one of our friends gave us a list of like 10 guitarists that they knew in the scene. We started looking at the list. So we looked at the first person and this guy was just an absolute shredder. He wasn't like anything in country music that I had seen. This guy's just absolutely shredding on a guitar, playing all these metal songs. And I looked at Dana and I was like, that's the guy. I didn't even need to look at anyone else on the list. I literally just saw him playing and I was like, that is what I want in my live show. And that person was Mick. Mick's, uh, he's incredible. He's just an absolutely crazy guitar player. We're all into the same influences. Like he loves all these 80s bands. He loves all his rock. He loves his country. He's a great guitarist, you know, like anything I throw at him, he can play it. When it gets to a solo section of a song, I just stand back and I'm like, man, this guy's got this. He knows exactly what he's doing. So I think he thought he was coming in to fill in for one show, but I knew I wanted this guy in my band properly. And he's still, he's stuck around. And I'm, I'm thankful. I'm th so thankful for that. Here we go. Let's, let's let you guys meet Mick. I can see from here. He oh. wins. <laughs> I didn't fall over! Yeah. My name's Mick, play guitar for Josh Setterfield. Say who my influences would be would probably take more than this segment can handle. Started off as a um, rock, lead, heavy guitar player. Massively influenced by people like Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, Eddie Van Halen was like my idol when I was 16. Got to about 19 and Dad said to me, so why don't you give country music going? I'm like, I don't want to play that shit. And then that's when I started getting like you're looking into like Keith Urban's and Brad Paisley's and I was like actually this stuff is really cool. At the time when I was 19 it just didn't seem cool but I just didn't realise how cool it actually was. I love it, love me country, love rock, love heavy metal, love it all. It just all works in one way or another. I met Josh in 2018. I was contacted by the boss. 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 I was like Josh does. And then I met Dana and Josh came to one of my gigs in town. I was pretty much given the go ahead to join the band then and been there ever since. My first show was 2018, supporting War Brothers at Toowoomba. It was good fun and I wondered what the hell I got myself into. But have not looked back and enjoyed every bit since. So working for Josh and Dana is pretty easy going. I mean, Josh kind of has the Alice Cooper vibe where we have our moment to shine, we become that front person. It's your fucking show. You're the lead bass player, the lead drummer, <laughs> the lead guitarist, and I'm the backup singer, okay? On three, we say four. One, two, three, four! And it's just, it's like, it's like it's a whole band. We're, we're a small family, so it's, it's fun, and I look forward to every gig. 
I guess in the band, there is a definite chemistry amongst us. Simon, he glues us all together. He's the companion of the group. Champion guy, funny, just fun to be around. India, just an all around cool chick. Amazing musician. Josh, man of many talents. Can do anything, scream, sing, play, drums, guitar, bass, you name it. Dana, stupid boss. <laughs> So there you go, you know Mick, you know Simon, you know India, you know the boss. I get up, I sing the songs, obviously I do a lot of work, but these guys are really what powers me, you know, like they're, they're the driving force that you guys see on a stage. These guys are like key players, you know, in, in, in the live show, like they, they make it. So if you see them at a show, make sure you go and say hello to these guys, they're absolutely amazing people. If you see the boss around, go and say hello, do this in her face. I'm sure she will absolutely love it. <laughs> so now you're up to speed with everyone that is in my little team. Uh, I hope you like them. They're absolute legends to me. Um, like I said, make sure you say hey to them. The next episode, we're going to cut to the behind the scenes of filming the Right About Now music video. And you can see what went on behind the scenes of Right About Now that you know. We're kicking off on the road. We're going to lose the pro camera and go straight out into the field with a phone. Follow us along. I say that a lot in all our episodes, but follow us along and catch up with our adventures. Maybe you might be in one of the upcoming episodes in the crowd. See you next time.